The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Let me say just a, a few words of introduction of uh, this international session. This international session ties uh, with the uh, convention team, uh, The Art of Concrete, and the title of this session, as you see, is uh, uh, Structural Concrete and Art Form. And it is also related to the presentation uh, I made uh, at the international lunch. And it will present the work of uh, some eminent uh, protagonist in the art of concrete, discussing at the end the problems that we face today about uh, what is uh, structural art today in the era of computer technology, in the era of virtual instruments. Who is the designer now? Who is uh, the conceptor of the form? The terms of morphogenesis and so on will be discussed and introduced. We are in a new era where form uh, may derive from the concept, but also is, uh, may come in part uh, from the virtual instrument uh, of information uh, technology, of information softwares, and so on. Uh, Pepe Izquierdo does not need any introduction, being the past president of ACI, and uh, the past of everything uh, is known as Pepe Izquierdo, and that is the best introduction. Thank you, Pepe. And you will speak of another contemporary structural artist, being Calatrava. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to, going to talk about Santiago Calatrava's poetic marriage of structure and form. Different from Felix Candela, there is no intention here to be economic or, or to be functional. Um, He's really a sculpture, a sculpture that, because of his mastery on architecture and structures itself, he's able to produce sculptures for the enjoyment uh, of the citizens of different parts of the world. Uh, he, in his love for developing sculptures, he ha has been able to translate that art form for large-scale sculptures into large-scale sculptures. And his, there's an American critic that's uh, called Ralph Maiden that says, if you have to ask for the price, you cannot afford it. The same thing happens with Santiago Calatrava. If the city or the museum has to put a price, sorry, that's not the artist to, to, to hire. Uh, I'm not here today because I am the most supreme expert in Santiago Calatrava's job. I'm here because as a young man, I was a sculptor and a painter myself. And being a structural engineer, I just fell in love with Calatrava's work. And today, I'm on the, with uh, my excuses for ACI, I, several structures I'm going to show are in steel. Uh, I try, have tried to summarize uh, different works by Calatrava that exemplarize his great knowledge of behavior, of structure and form, and how to translate those into a sculpture uh, for the human uh, experience. Uh, first, just some, some, some data about, about Santiago Calatrava. He's, he's a, a trained architect, engineer, uh, and a sculptor itself. Uh, recently, he started working in, 
here in, in the United States. I'm going to go quick because we're running out of time and, and the part of the buildings is better. Uh, in, in 1968, at the age of 17, that's when, when the, uh, he began uh, the school at Valencia, in the Escuela Técnica Superior de Arquitectura. Uh, then he moved to the Institute of Technology in Zurich uh, to have a formal um, education in engineering. And then he proceeded to do a, a post-graduate post studies, and his thesis was concerning the foldability of space frame. So he was uh, very intuitive about this thing. Uh, he, he avoided studying architecture and engineering at the same time. He, he said that he had to be good independently at each practice, so he finished architecture, then he went to become a great engineer. Uh, he, he, at 30 years old, in 1981, he, he started his first office in Zurich. Uh, eight years later in, in Paris, uh, uh, he opened his second office, and, uh, and he has won uh, several awards so I must first start with bridges, and, and many people know Santiago Calatrava because of his bridge work. And uh, we should start with Alamillo Bridge. And, and Angel Herrera was, we were commenting on a recent publication where they just built a bridge in China who could be probably have a problem with copyright with the Alamillo Bridge. But that's, uh, con his conceptual design uh, has evolved and um, has, has been used um, uh, in many places around the world. Huh. That ribbon on the right side is covering up my slide number, so I'm lost there. It's, it's okay, because I put the number on my slide to know how late I am in my presentation. Uh, I'm always there, but I have to keep track of myself, otherwise I could be uh, past those general sessions to be here talking about Caratrava. <laughs> so this is just a bridge uh, on the Guadalquivir River. Um, and in Spain, and and the bridge, uh, the, the it had to cover about 1.5 kilometers. There was originally the concept of building two bridges, and and Calatrava, and Calatrava came up with this uh, beautiful design. Um, okay, uh, well, well, where the basic concept of the stability of the structure, rather than have a central pylon having a the equivalent of forces on two sides for stabilizing the structure, uh, this bridge, the weight on the pylon is the one that stabilizes uh, the structure itself. And as you can see, it's just a gorgeous sculpture that serves to put traffic between two sides of the river. And one of the things of Calatrava is that his sculptures, of these large-scale public sculptures, becomes landmarks everywhere they are built. And, and, and that's the price. You want uh, Calatrava's work? You have to ask. You have to pay for the price. So the 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 I'm going to show you some diagram on that. The the central section is a bus girder. Uh, the the cable uh, are uh, although from from uh, uh, distance it may look like a single cable. It's dual cables. Each side of the central box girder. The decks for the traffic are cantilevered. And all bridges from, from Calatrava that are for traffic, they always have a walkway. It's very fun of people walking around there and enjoying the, the bridges and, and the structures. Um, and, uh, and, and so they are canty, cantilever wings and, uh, that are made out of steel. Uh, basically, if we take a section and, and take out the concrete, because the weight inside the, the steel structure is, is by the addition of concrete, uh, this would basically be the ribs and you can see here one of the steel pipes where, where the where the, uh, uh, the tension uh, uh, cables uh, are, are, are inside. Uh, basically this is the, the diagram. Uh, you can see uh, the curve uh, figure shows basically the loading that the traffic and the pedestrians put in. Uh, this is the forces that exist for the stability of the bridge itself then the forces developed by the, the cable themselves and the forces that it induce on the pylon and then the interior forces that develop. Um, the one uh, dash here is the internal forces. So, so it's, it's in perfect equilibrium of uh, a very unstable form, but it's perfectly in equilibrium. And I think that's, that's the key. As we go on and, and enjoy 
uh, several of his structures, you will see that the key that he's looking into doing um, uh, uh, what we would call risky forms, they always are ended up in a perfectly balanced structure that allows it to be built and to be enjoyed. This is some of the pictures and because of his architectural training, uh, which served as the same as structure for his sculpture, his life as, his, as a sculpture, uh, every single detail is, is managed with, with the beauty of, of a work of art. Uh, nothing is left for uh, the bad reputation that we engineers sometimes have as nerds and, and not caring for some of the details. Uh, Calatrava's uh, attention to detail is, is, is gorgeous. You can see here, this is the pedestrian walkway in the center. You, you see the traffic to each side, and you can see some of the details uh, on the pylon itself as the dual set of cables go uh, down the deck. This is a basic a section of the, of the pylon itself. As you can see, all the, the steel uh, shell in the outside and, and, and the distribution in the inside. You can see the concrete. This large uh, circle in the inside is for a staircase, uh, and and, for, and then on these two ellipses here are where the cables uh, of the bridge uh, are located. And you can see the mass there, and and uh, as all cables stay bridges, the construction has to have a certain sequence so uh, it will be stable all the process, not only at the end, further because if you have to um, put some shoring or extreme shoring for be able to build it and the cost uh, is extreme but and the process is done that way and, and it was built that way you see from every single angle is it's just a, a, a gorgeous project. Then the Bagda Roda Bridge. Uh, this is in, done in Barcelona. Not necessarily the most beautiful bridge by Calatrava but I'm just showing it because it's a different solution using Cable Street, a, a Cable uh, State Bridge and uh, this, this uh, city, um, uh, uh, this, this project, as well as the other Calatrava bridges, sir, again serves as a pedestrian, as a same and, uh, and cars. And one of the uh, gains of Calatrava when developing this bridge was for people to enjoy the city, the views of the city from such a mo monument. Um, the, the bridge uh, itself has two sets of arcs to each side, and each set of arc could sustain the half of the bridge without the requirement of the other bridge. So at the center of the bridge, there's the, the structure is completely stable. And they're just tied together because of the functionality. Um, this is the original sketches by, by, by Calatrava. And as you can see, it has two sets of arcs on each side. One that directly supports um, the deck and the other one that stabilizes the bridge. And I'm going to show, show you that. Uh, the, the interior arc uh, with the cables has the, the support of the central uh, box girder that takes charge of half of the, of, the, of the section of the bridge for the cars and then the cantilever for these balconies that are for the um, citizens to enjoy uh, the beauties of the city. Uh, the exterior arches with both of them uh, were uh, beautifully done that they create a, a, a chasm place stair uh, on white concrete uh, and that uh, angle uh, of the exterior arc, uh, uh, I'll show you in a picture, uh, stabilize the bridge for lateral loading. Um, the, the main span is 46 meters. Uh, uh, the, the decks, um, no, I'm sorry, the steel tension rods are 1.85 uh, meters in the center. And, and there are four triangular welded box sections, steel arches, that, uh, that's basically the section. The secondary inclined arcs are, are supported to, to give that stabilization. You can see it better in this picture. Um, the, the, the central uh, um, arc, which is uh, aligned with the vertical, is the one that takes most of the load from, or take all of the, the load uh, from, from the uh, highway itself. Then we have this wood deck for the pedestrians, and the, the, the inclination of the exterior arc serves as a brace for the bridge itself to take loads in the other direction. And you can see the beauty of all the details of the connectors, uh, similar to the Alamillo Bridge, where you have a center structure with wings. And these are the wings that go to the outside uh, that stabilize 
uh, and, and give um, um, uh, stabilize the whole deck and, uh, 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 as we go on. Um, the the bridge deck is made of out of hardwood, uh, hardwood, and the steel ribs are are uh, 5.0 meters, and, and that's the data. The, the the sessions are the presentations are going to be on the website, so I'm I'm not going to go deeply into the data, but I put it in the presentation so you could have a um, uh, on information. Uh, this is a, a, another look of the bridge. Again, you have a better perspective now uh, of the road and, and the two arcs uh, raising from the stairs. What I meant on the beginning is that from this point to the right and from this point to the left, each of the sections is completely stable and, and they don't need each other to be, to be supported. Then the Campo Volatin Bridge. This is um, now I'm going through a few of pedestrian bridges from from Calatrava. All, all of them uh, um, beautiful sculptures. Um, and this is this was done uh, next to the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao uh, by architect Gary, and uh, he won the project, uh, which is a proposal, and and he he created a parabolic arc that is uh, non-symmetrical, and and the structure itself looks like a spinal cord, okay? And what he does is that uh, he, he has um, uh, two levels of, of ways to stabilizing these risky structures, if you want to put it that way. Uh, the, the supports of the bridge, and we're going to see some more pictures from that, starts on the two axes, the pedestrian axis of the bridge, and, and the bridge itself is, is, is supported on the end of a cantilever raising from the supports. Okay? That, at the same time, supports the main arc, and it goes uh, in an outside curve, horizontally speaking. And having the, the, the main, main arc that supports, uh, for, for vertical loads, the bridge uh, in that crossing geometry, and having, as you can, you can enjoy, see that outside curvature on the other direction, it's, it gives a beautiful stabilized uh, project uh, and create a, an extraordinary form that uh, many tourists and, and people show. This is some, some of, of the sketches uh, of, of the concept uh, uh, of the walkway. And um, this is the endpoints of the uh, pedestrian access to the bridge itself, and you can see uh, the, the uh, connection and the beginning of the two arches that goes from one end uh, to the other end. They themselves are aligned vertically, but visually, because of the horizontal curvature, they look that is twisted. Uh, this is uh, a, a, be a, a beautiful picture on the bottom side, again, it has a, a central beam that is, uh, is made out of a steel. It's a circular section. Again, following the Alamillo concept, uh, having the wings, in this, in this case, uh, they, they change in, in, in size. Why? Because truly, uh, the arc below, again, is aligned with the vertical, it's visually, that, the, that, the, that the, the, this outside arc is the one that stabilizes the bridge uh, as, as, as an arc, horizontal arc. And that's why the, the sections of the bridge, the same as the one who is supporting the suspended bridge, they are aligned with the vertical. Uh, then the Reggio Emilia bridges uh, uh, in the zone of Man, Man Casale. Uh, this is uh, three bridges in one. Uh, uh, two of them are twins and, and, and both sides of a, of a large uh, central bridge, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful project, and, uh, and uh, Calatrava was some kind inspired by human form, and these uh, two arches has a, a beautiful play with the cables. The one on the center is uh, just supported, uh, goes aligned with the vertical and supports, again, a, a box girder sections. They have 70 meters each, and uh, as you can see, the, the arc on the certain one is a beauty, you know, the way that the craftsmanship from, 
all his projects is uh, extraordinary. And, and, and again, this, this deck uh, is, uh, is vertically supported in the, in the middle. This is the center span. Um, and, and you can see uh, the beautiful details in order to reduce uh, uh, the massiveness of, of the uh, support uh, of the arc. They, they have a, a large uh, circular holes uh, to, to uh, reduce and create some negative spaces as part of the architecture of the project itself. But what really became interesting is uh, the way of using the cables on the two uh, uh, twin bridges. And as you can see uh, on, uh, on, on these pictures, uh, there's a, uh, like a kind of web that develops visually uh, instead of the traditional suspended bridge where the cables are aligned and, and, and they are vertical. Uh, here, they have two different conditions. On one thing, the cables, they, 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 are, they are born or they, or they start not from an aligned uh, column, but rather from an arc. So the point where they start is completely different. So, so they move in space. Now the cables play a game of, of three-dimensional figure. But in, in addition to that, he, he, as you can see, he plays another trick on the visuality of, of this sculpture is that the, at the lower point of the connections to the arc are the cables that go to the most outside part of the part they are supporting. So, so then they create a fan-like type of movement of the cables, but not in one dimension, but in two dimensions. The, the, the dimension on, on how they interact with the border of the bridge, and at the same time, how they fan out from the top of the arc and create that visual 3D effect. And, and that's really uh, something that, depending on the angle that, that uh, you look at the bridge, the web, the, the spider web style of, of alignment of cables uh, are shown. You can see here um, uh, a beautiful uh, picture. Uh, of it, uh, as you can see, again we have the same concept of the of the central uh, uh, box girder beam, and and the ribs, uh, cantilever ribs going going to the outside. Here here you can see how the cables at the lower point uh, of the arc are the ones who stretch the farthest out from, from from the bridge, and again creating that twisting as it goes up on on the arc from the bridge, making a, a, a visual uh, 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 impact, beautiful visual impact. And because it's two-sided, then you have four webs, four spider webs, one for each side of the bridge and one for each side on the, okay, I have to, this is an interior section of the box girder with the, with the cable stake. This is a, another photo, as you can see. They come, they come from the arc. The ones who come from the top go to the closer part. The ones from the bottom come to the more extreme part. Then this is the Ponte de la Constitución. Some Italians find this bridge uh, irreverent to the city of uh, Venezia. Uh, personally, I love the bridge. Uh, the bridge has some construction problems. Uh, one of the supports move a little bit after construction. It has to be raised back into place and the foundation stabilized. But I think that the, the, the Grand Canal of Venice has only a few bridges that go over it. And this was intending to solve the problem to go into the main train station of Venice. Uh, I think that as you go in a boat in the main canal, you don't see it as striking, as a, as a big Irreverent, I think, is a solution similar to Architect Pay in the Louvre Museum in, in Paris. That is a super modern pyramid there, uh, making a statement of ar architecture. And the same thing happened with the Ponte de la Constitución. It, it's gorgeous. The deck is made out of core glass and steel. Uh, uh, there, it is post tension. Uh, the section on the center, the section on the end, uh, making uh, attention on art. This is. Uh, some pictures during construction, again because of time, and this is the beauty of, of the bridge. It's a sculpture there, 
on the Grand Canal in Venice is uh, solve a big problem. Cost three times what was the original budget. Yes, Calatrava's trademark, but there it goes. Buildings. I have three minutes. The Olympic Stadium in Athens. Again, this is steel, but I thought it was worth um, uh, uh, showing again the sculpture. This stadium existed. Calatrava was a co commission to uh, cover the, the seats of the stadium. And uh, uh, basically, this picture shows better uh, the, the, the stadium itself. And, and this is two huge arcs that uh, verti align vertically support uh, the, the, the roof because the stadium is an ellipse form. That's why you see all the movement inside the, the glass area roof. And one of the beauties is that he decided that the roof is translucent. Actually, it only resists, it's made out of glass and filters only 60% uh, of, the, of the light because he felt that people sitting in a sunny day in the stadium, they need to feel the sun, although in a lesser intensity. And this is data of how many tons, etc. You can see the beauty of the roof. Again, vertically aligned as it goes back following the, the, the elliptical part, uh, flat uh, of the, of the, of the stadium and it goes, goes on the beginning. Look <laughs> how gorgeous it really is. The same trick as the other bridge, the Hessian bridge. The arc, this arc is vertical, the same as this one, you know, following the structure. Uh, this is some of the details, again, you, using always the constant of the wings and, and some central uh, point. This is uh, some of the sketches. This is some other structures that not only work on the stadium, but some, some other in addition to them. Then the Auditorio de Tenerife, Spain, one of the most famous. This is actually in concrete. <laughs> and this, this is just, uh, we're talking about sculpture. This, this is a gorgeous sculpture. Uh, it's a beautiful building. Um, uh, it's, uh, in, it's, that, it's in, the, in uh, like we said before, Tenerife. I just want to, to show to you. I, I, I'm going to show you some construction pictures. Uh, and again, the way he designed and he constructs, and that's basically the answer that Maria gave before. Uh, they have to be involved in the construction, otherwise these sculptures cannot be performed by a regular contractor. The artist has to be part of it from the beginning to the end. And the way it was constructed is keeping, again, a balance uh, of levels and weights uh, in order to be and guaranteeing the, 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 uh, there, it can give you some hints on the whiteness of the cement. Uh, the pressure formula that I use in Tenerife, this is some of his sketches, uh, gorgeous. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going quickly. The lighting on all his buildings and bridges is, is gorgeous lighting to, to make a statement uh, on whatever they are. Uh, again, I'm missing that. This is just a section of how it works, uh, how, where the, the central theater and uh, some of the different facilities. Always in his designs of buildings and bridges for people to enjoy the city. So there are terraces. And, and, and halls and meeting places and, and restaurants so that people can not only from the outside enjoy his culture, but from the inside have a better picture of what's surrounding the sculpture itself. Here are some, some construction pictures. Uh, one caveat, the end point is not made out of concrete. That's prefabricated and built, but the rest you can see the formwork there. Uh, this is the auditorium, a uh, gorgeous place. You know, even sitting there in silence, you can hear the music uh, of the auditorium itself. Um, this is some, again, uh, pointing out toward the beauty of being able to enjoy the surrounding of the city because you are inside an incredible space created by, I know I, I ran out of time. And the last one, just the, I could not uh, leave without, is the turning torso in Sweden, which was inspired by a sculpture he made himself. Uh, uh, of the human body, and and again, he has to be part of the construction. He has to be able to sit down with the contractor, how it will be built, how it will be done. Otherwise, they, it, it cannot be performed. It's basically, uh, as we saw before, uh, nine segments. Uh, each of the segments is uh, twisted a little bit, and from the bottom part to the top part, there's a complete rotation of 90 degrees between the, between the segment. Um, each floor uh, is uh, an irregular pentagon. We're going to see some pictures of that. And there are 147 apartments uh, uh, on the building. And you can see it looks uh, just like a vertical sculpture. And 
uh, actual user functional building uh, the framework. Uh, there is a course, uh, concrete core, I'm sorry, uh, shaped like a concrete pipe. Uh, inside the court, uh, a concrete construction, you have all the services, stairs, elevators, etc. Uh, the structural slabs are shaped like a pie and they are rotated uh, at, at each of the levels that the torso uh, rotates. And, and the facade itself is curved aluminum uh, uh, with windows leading in the outside. You can see like that. The exterior frame, framing in steel, um, serve uh, to stabilize and to give a lateral resistance. And one important thing is to reduce, is, is designed with some damping, so that it reduce, reduces uh, the potential vibration of the building uh, due to the wind. Uh, that's the ESCO skeleton around the building from facade. That, and here you can see uh, the rotation on each of the level in the plan, and that's why it's called a pie shape, uh, as it rotates and goes goes uh, uh, up up one level. Ah, I'm sorry, there was the USA. USA. The Milwaukee Art Museum. One, one thing. Okay. The, only, the, the beauty of this part, uh, they they made this museum, is that this is a, actually a trellis that moves dynamic dynamically. Uh, not only the museum is a beauty itself, it has a bridge, a great, beautiful pedestrian bridge to enjoy the Lake Michigan, but the, the, the piece that is the resistance of this project is the Bryce Desolate, which is, uh, uh, I'm going to show you the picture, this is close at night, and when the temperature and the snow is heavy, and then it goes on and it opens so that the visitors of the museum can enjoy the sun, so it's uh, around uh, this central piece, it opens like wings, and obviously have become a landmark, obviously it cost 2.5 times what it was originally budget, uh, but again, this is Calatrava, and you can see the openings in glass inside the, on the sides that are exposed to the sun once the wings are, are, are open, and you can see uh, that's poetry of construction, <laughs> you, you, are, you are inside it. And again, as I mentioned before, on, on the auditorium, the Tenerife, etc., and the bridges, all the corners, all the there's always uh, 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 looking out to as much as you enjoy the bridge, the building from the outside, how you can see the life more beautiful from the inside as you move uh, from sides. And there are several sites, several book of Calatrava, and that's about. 